One of the highlights of this year's Melbourne Documentary Film Festival in July is a film called A Boy Called Piano. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to the director of A Boy Called Piano, Nina Nawalawalau. <laughs> Almost got it. Well, like, right. Yeah. Hello, well, Nina. Hello. <laughs> got well, it. Lava, lovely to have this opportunity. Thank you. My pleasure to talk to you. And uh, it's such a, a fascinating film about uh, John Luafutu. Um, tell me about um, meeting him, finding him, and telling his story. Oh, well, you know, it's, a, it's, it's quite a journey. Um, well, my husband, well, my husband, Tom McCrory, who's the executive producer of The Conch, used to work at the New Zealand Drama School. Uh, for many years as the move, head of movement and Matthias Luafutu, who's in the film, of course, playing himself, who's the son, came in as a student and um, and they formed a very close bond. Anyway, he never quite completed his studies and so he left um, his father's book, Fat Moana's book, in my husband's pigeonhole, which was uh, called A Boy Called Broke, which was the book that Fat Moana wrote when he was in prison. Anyway, it sat on our bookshelf for a long time and then we thought, and then Tom sort of picked it up and thought, oh, why don't we make a play and why don't we look at how to make the story and um, and work with him? And so then we thought, oh, what about if his brother, of course, who is a uh, scribe, you know, the Malor, the um, renowned hip-hop artist, and then his father. And so that became, we worked together and made the play The White Guitar and um, and that was a journey from Whakamuana coming as a child to New Zealand. And it went all the way through the arc of time, through the generational story to Christchurch earthquake. And then we thought, oh, you know, um, let's put a lens on a specific part of it, which is so relevant, which was the boys, Whakamuana's time in the boys' homes. And so he and Tom went on a journey of writing a, the play based on his time there and the bond of himself and two Māori boys and looking at the whole thing of uh, state care and his time from the perspective of a child. So we we had the play and we um, were ready to tour it and COVID happened. And so in a way we sidestepped and made it into a, a documentary. And um, so it's been an incredible process to translate something that was a play and look at how to put it into, you know, digital form and also into a radio play. So um, that's sort of the arc of the relationship um, with the family. And I'm just so grateful um, to walk the journey with my team alongside Whakamwana, who's, you know, so brave to revisit uh, the things that, um, revisit the places of things that happen to many, many children. Māori and Pacific and Pākehā children, you know, in state care. So that that's sort of how the documentary came about. What an interesting story. And uh, he is so open about his experiences and talking about it and uh, and revisiting them. And uh, uh, did you have any challenges in the actual filmmaking process? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, I mean, it was my first time to make uh, um, a film. And so um, I had a wonderful, you know, very experienced team around me and Matthias and Aaron and the different actors, uh, or his son and the different people are very experienced film actors in their own right. So in a way, it was so collaborative. Yes, I think that... Um, Asking Fatma wanted to go back to Kohitere, which is the boys' home, which you see in the documentary, where he's moving through the, uh, for, you know, the the compound. Um, that was, you know, that was very in the moment because we didn't know. Only he knew where is the isolation block, where is the gym, these places where a lot of, um, a lot of harm was done to the children, especially in the isolation block. So um, working in the moment, of course, and asking someone to go in and and um, and taking him in there to revisit somewhere that he was held as a child, um, that was, um, you know, one has to learn a lot. What you the relationship of what you ask of somebody, and how you also take care of them. But 
but I think um, that by revisiting, it's part of his own healing process. And um, and I revisited another time without him to sort of do visual things, because I think for him there was only a set amount of time he really physically wanted to be on that in that place. Yeah. Okay. It's very interesting. You go into his past, his family situation, and uh, and sort of what got him into those uh, uh, boys' homes, and uh, uh, and also the royal commission um, that uh, took place uh, into the uh, into those homes. Uh, I mean, putting all that together was uh, very interesting in itself. Absolutely. I mean, it's um, of course we had shot the uh, footage, and then of course John. Uh, had the courage and he is you know in this very leadership role in the country as being the eldest Pacific Island man to come forward um, in front of the Royal Commission um, and so of course he that footage um, and that process for him happened um, a few months after we'd finished filming the documentary so um, it was such a um, it was such a clue in a way in the way to sort of how do you how do you tell that story and how do we bring his story forward so having his own description and his own way of communicating you know with the royal commission um was just a beautiful way to um bring it into the now i suppose be able to go back in time and try and reenact little moments or look for ways to have the visual landscape, but then also having him, you know, in in a Pacific context with the crown, which is um, very much, you know, in the now um, in this country, it's still, of course, in a process with the Royal Commission and and what they will take to the government and so forth. Ah, how how interesting that that's still ongoing. Um, and the, uh, you mentioned reenactments. The the scenes inside the the cells, um, in in those uh, homes. It, it's just incredible to reenact those and to show, uh, how awful those uh, minuscule cells were. Yeah, well, I I think that that was the beauty of having the play as a base. We mm. were able to think, well, let's take this monologue of this um, of of Wheels, who's the boy who in Fakarewere, where we have all the water footage and him being a penny diver. Or oh, let's take this other monologue. And so, um, in a sense, um, I tried to. I mean, that actual cell that it's filmed in is an isolation cell. So it's a real one, and um, and what is so interesting is the window and the sort of church-like window, and also trying to work with the colour so that it's it, you try and get the audience to enjoy looking at the composition, even though the material is extremely dark. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, you did that so well. Those were sort of thank you, thank yeah. you, and those were sort of obvious choices of how to, and also, of course, the wonderful Mark Vanilau, who was our composer, and how to use the Pacific, the Samoan, um, you know, voice, the male voice in Tupe Lua Lua, who plays the, the, the grandmother, you can hear her voice, and I think all children uh, globally, a lot of Indigenous children, um, which is why I believe it's moving because, you know, it, you know, and there are all those realities in Australia, you know, with Indigenous children mm. and, and Sami children in Finland and places where the film has sort of flowed in Canada with First Nation. Um, and I think all every child, of course, um, will miss their mother or they miss these things that they hold on to. So trying to kind of, you know, put that around the darkness is, is the sense of healing or what we listen for in our most lonely moments. Yes. Yes. No, again, very well done. And and the title is just so wonderful, A Boy Called Piano, uh, especially the poignancy of how he got that sort of title, I suppose. Oh, absolutely, and it's there in the Royal Commission moment when he's speaking about, you know, piano and that his mother, you know, loved playing the piano and so they, you know, named her first son piano. And in a way, we took that um, that truth and that's why, you know, we had Mark Vanilau with, an, with a baby, a little baby grand on stage, you know, playing live because she is that character. So it's not just... Um, 
oh, we use the piano to, um, you know, do the musical score. We're also trying to use the, you know, the piano as her speaking to him or, rese you know, resembling or, you know, mm. reflecting that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So well done, and and also uh, I was interested to see the archival footage that you were able to put in. That uh, uh, that historic archival stuff is just so interesting. You know, that's and I think one of the things was, of course, with the archival footage of Fakarewarewa, um, which is in Rotorua, where the boy, the the Maori boy, wheels, because I think that um, for us as Pacific people, water is um you know is the spirituality of water itself um and um and so having you know i suppose the whole thing of being in the womb and and this thing of innocence and we're all in a womb and the water that surrounds us so being able to sort of look into historic footage and bring the audience back into you know the 60s and have have that visual landscape um, de definitely layered, um, layered the way we were able to tell the story. Yes, and it was also so interesting to see uh, John, uh, as he's so sort of been referred to as, um, and his uh, family, uh, his uh, and his grand, uh, his son and his grandson. It's a uh, it, that generational sort of aspect was nicely covered. I thought. Oh, thank you. He's Tane uh, Tane Luafutu, who is Matthias's son. I mean. I think, um, you know, one of the positive things to do with healing is that they've broken the cycle. You know, the, the thing of Fatmoina, you know, being in prison and then his son following that and then how to find ways out and through. And I think that um, there's that thing of hope, isn't there? And that it's, we must show hope and because there's many, many families and many, many uh, situations which is generational and all of the things that you find a lot of the sons or grandsons in the prisons uh, today and and one of our goals was is really to take it into prisons and we were in Tahiti at the FIFO Film Festival and we went to um, Tahitian prison and, and screened the film and and it was very much like that there was a man there and there was his son also there so um, you know we, we you know, I sort of made the film for prisoners. I was sort of talking to them, talking to the men that are John's, were there with John that haven't escaped the system in a way. And so I think, you know, you're always looking for light or hope. or yeah. um, And so Tane brings that beautiful essence of himself. And he's, he's, his mother is Māori and, you know, and Matthias Samoan. So it's a beautiful... A joining in a way of cultures. Mm. Yes, yes. Uh, again, that that is just so interesting. Um, tell me about the editing process because that's always the fun part of a uh, making a documentary <laughs> and uh, deciding what stays in and what goes out of the final version. Uh, what uh, issues did you have with that? <laughs> Um, well, it was my first time to go through a process and I worked with the most wonderful, experienced um, editor, Lala Rolls, and um, and she grew up in Fiji herself and she's worked on so many Pacific uh, stories and films and different things. And um, I mean, I suppose it was um, some of the challenges were, um, you know, where I, I not went blind, but I had key departure points, like I thought of this theme of pathways, I thought of this thing of walking, you know, seeing a river or uh, the corridor of a prison cell or the pier and things that are pathways that how we make a choice and what happens to us. And so um, I tried to sort of layer in this visual landscape. Um, and I think once I discovered the Royal Commission material and I had that to use it it gave me a good foundation of sort of how to do things but certainly um there were times where um I suppose I was trying to translate my theater lat way of working which is very visual like the use of the feathers and trying to show the audience that the feathers resemble the sort of spirits of the children and I was trying to look at different through lines and some of them are quite subtle but it's just wonderful that people have picked up on those things um, but definitely um, I think it might not be 
put together in the ways sort of certain ways that documentaries are put together. But for me, I believe we need the visual the visual world. And I mean, I we did get a certain amount into filming like everybody and then you need more money and so when we got we applied for more money I was able to kind of stand back and think okay what isn't there and I think landscape and wind and sky and water these are the spiritual elements that one needs when you're trying to do something where you might go into the epic and then boom into isolation of a cell and the things that Young people can't access when they're locked up, you know, the, the, the water, the ocean, the wind. So, yeah, I definitely, I, I found it, you know, at times flowing and at other times very challenging, um, you know, because it's not like a play and you can sort of go, oh, cut, cut that out. Oh, keep it. It's, it's complete, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. But I uh that's learning it's an amazing learning process and then of course it went on multi television so we had to i had to put the ad breaks in and then that was another opportunity for me to think into okay where do you how do you cut something in a different way so it was a fascinating um process and yeah it was it was fascinating i loved it as well as challenging you know <laughs> well well done on on the on facing those challenges and doing it so well uh, uh, now of course the film was will be screening in july as part of the melbourne documentary film festival but as you've already alluded to it's already screened elsewhere uh, at other film festivals on maori tv and so on what sort of responses have you been getting Oh, it's been um, really overwhelming. It's been wonderful. It's wonderful to to um, have that reflection back that people, you know, in Finland or people in Canada, um, you know, connect with it. I think one of the things that really set us off was really the Indigenous uh, pathways. And we really focused on go, looking into Imaginative was, the, you know, in Montreal and uh, in Toronto. And then I went up to the Arctic Circle to, you know, to the Sami Film Festival in, in the middle of the, you know, cold in January. And they carved their theatre out of snow and then they carved this and then they put reindeer skins. And so one of the things that's so amazing is that other Indigenous people, of course, you know, it's a similar story. And, um, and so in a way... Um, he's a global voice in a sense. Um, I think also um, um, human rights, you know, there's been a sort of thing with the human rights and, uh, you know, Mexico and different places where um, there are, it's just the similarities, I suppose, of many, many indigenous um, peoples all over the world. So you sort of, by sharing it and it moving, in a way you educate yourself a lot more. Um, yeah, but, um, you know, I think it's the fact that it's a male story and it's it's the men of the men that are opening and Whakamuana being so brave, it opens up a lot of men. And that's been one of the really wonderful responses with Q&As and, and people uh, sharing their own stories. Uh -huh. uh, again, so interesting to hear that, and, and congratulations on, on that film. It, it, uh, uh, it is really quite uh, incredible in many respects. The story is just so powerful, and uh, and well done on, on sharing that. Um, I can imagine now that you'll be perhaps looking at making more films. Well, yes. I, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, well, you know, it's a wonderful medium, and it's... It's, I mean, just the fact that it can move on its own, isn't it? And it can really go out there um, and they've got that global audience with theatre. It's, you know, you have to physically talk, which is a beautiful art form as well. But the, yes, I have, I've, I've learned so much and um, definitely hope that, um, yes, have something that we're sort of developing and, um, and it's wonderful to, when you, when you connect with um, other creatives, like our team itself and we've gone on such a lot you have the shorthand and you think oh what are the other things or what are the what's what's the right thing to make in a sense so gosh yes absolutely I'm in okay and and <laughs> uh, and we see a number of films from New Zealand and, and it's not a huge industry but what a really 
good industry New Zealand film industry is both narratives and documentaries and uh, and I gather there's a fair bit of support to make films and to tell stories especially Maori stories yeah well I think um the power of um in the now of of, of taking ownership of our own stories and realizing that the power of um, storytelling is is so much about what's within us and our own identity and and as you you know as we can see with very you know the Disney's and the more commercial things this sort of the Pacific storytelling or the the focus coming into the Pacific it's um it's a very very exciting time for um for us you know as people Pacific people and look we stand you know we're on the there's so many people that have we stand on the shoulders of so many amazing filmmakers and um and so yeah there is a it's it's wonderful to do something and then people feel the interest and think you know and, and to and to take it out there and and for people to resonate with it so it's you know it's been wonderful to it went to it was in I was in Sydney the other week um, at the Riverside Theatre where they screened the film and there was a big Pacific um, audience that came in and you know of course there are all those real realities with you know Pacific people in in the prisons and in state care and Indigenous in Australia. Um, and all of you know the fullness of the population and the prisons so these are great things because then you feel all oh, what is the stories or what are the things we want to reveal and heal because you know there's so much shame that is linked around family names and oh my god someone's in prison and the shame and in fact Moana you know he's just um, the braveness of um, telling his own story releasing sharing that bring you know makes other people um it's it's having an impact and and um it's an honor to um to walk alongside their family oh excellent to hear that and the power of filmmaking to uh yes, um absolutely. to highlight yeah yeah look yes. look congratulations uh, uh, a boy called piano is screening uh in july as part of the melbourne documentary film festival and i've been speaking to the director of uh, boy called piano uh nina na walo walo thank you so much for speaking to thank me you. thank <laughs> you thank you so much and have a wonderful day you too all the best thank you. okay bye-bye bye-bye bye-bye